This is the story of freedom. The freedom to explore the world. The freedom to shine bright. The freedom to grow. The freedom to fly. The freedom to learn. The freedom to try. The freedom to dream. The freedom to create a better future. The story of progress of India is the story of TCS. Welcome to the second episode of our special show on Transforming India. We are celebrating Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, which means we are not just celebrating the past 75 years, but also the India of tomorrow, India 2.0. And how can we talk about India 2.0 without mentioning the contributions of research and innovation? To speak to us on the topic, we have a very special panel today. First up, we have Dr. Shekhar Mande, who is the former DG of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. Next, we have Dr. Sangamitra Pandopadhyay. She is the director of the Indian Statistical Institute at Calcutta. We also have K. Anand Krishnan. He is the executive vice president and the chief technology officer of Tata Consultancy Services. And we also have Professor Subhashish Chaudhary, director of the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. Welcome to the show. So my first question to you is Dr. Mande. As a scientist, what does India at 75 mean to you? It's important to remember that in 1947, when the colonial powers left, our GDP was a mere 2.7 lakh crores and our food grain production was nearly about 50 million tons. We were coming out of one of the deadliest famines in recent times in 1947, out of the war, and out of one of the largest migrations in human history. So the challenges for independent India were actually to get people trained, skilled for jobs, build industry, make sure that we develop a proper ecosystem. We had merely 17 universities and IITs did not exist in 1947. So build a complete education system, feed our population, implement democracy, and country security, these are some of the challenges that what we had. And with that in mind, uh, we decided that science, technology and innovation would play an important role in the next number of years in the independent country. And at that time, the only publicly funded uh, organization for giving research grants and all was essentially CSIR, which had been founded in 1942. And therefore, science, technology and innovation and its promotion Responsibility came upon CSIR and soon after many, many other organizations came in, Department of Atomic Energy, DRDO, ICAR, ICMR and so on and so forth. And of course, many education institutions starting from 1950s, the IITs. So all of it together is time to reflect upon how all of us have done together well or not so well in which areas in the 75 years of our history. So I think it's a good occasion to reflect upon these facts and see what we can do for the future. Back to you, Priyanka. Uh, you know, we had some visionary uh, scientists with us in the past. We had Homi Baba, we had C.V. Raman, we had Vikram Sarabhai. Do you think these visionary scientists gave us a head start? What you see, these names that you mentioned, you know, like C.V. Raman, Homi Baba, Vikram Sarabhai, they were not only like, uh, you know, the scientists or engineers, you know, per se, but they are the also a strong personality, believers of nationalism, that something has to be set up, which will have a long lasting thing. So they had the vision. And if you see today, many of these organizations and others were created by them. Even today, they are actually have been testing the time, right? And they continue. They created the spirit that many things can be done. So if you look at the, you know, the atomic energy, Department of Atomic Energy, we were probably one of the most successful countries, you know, in terms of if you look at how much of investment versus how much is the, you know, the output that has come. And similarly, if you look at, let's say, Vikram Sarabhai, you go into the space and other things, you know, see what a remarkable kind of thing that has happened over time. 
right? So, and this thing, it's definitely, it's continuing. And it is our responsibility to actually ensure that the spirit continues and the government also has to ensure that this is the kind of whatever the funding, whatever the kind of facilities that are required, they continue to be provided. Anand, uh, Mr. Kohli had the vision to set up, you know, one of the first industrial research centers, which is uh, now TRDDC. Tell us about that vision and, you know, tell us about TRDDC and how it has been a catalyst in building India. Oh, Priyanka, uh, Mr. Kohli was truly a visionary. And uh, in the mid-1970s, he articulated that India had missed the industrial revolution, but we should not miss the information revolution. And that thought process and the conviction that information technology right from that early stage of the 1970s is going to be integral to so many other industries was the catalyst for setting up of TRDDC. Right? And that seed is now TCS Research and Innovation. We have over 40 labs globally. That culture, which has been part of TRDDC, is now global. Our academic ecosystem, which Mr. Kohli established with the IITs in the 1970s, is now worldwide across uh, so many different institutions, of course, in India, but also uh, globally. And lastly, I think the kind of problem statements that we work on are at truly the cutting edge. So that is the kind of pioneering vision that FC Kohli established with TRDDC the first step, and now uh, we are taking that vision further forward. I want to come to you, Dr. Sangamitra. Uh, would it be fair to say that research and innovation has been key in building the digital backbone or the backbone of the nation and the growth and development of it? Uh, the Green Revolution, the White Revolution, um, the space program of the country, the nuclear program of the country. Uh, you can uh, look at the vaccine uh, vaccine industry of India, these are all through science uh, and technological research and innovation which have played its role of where India is today. Uh, in healthcare, there, are, there have been a lot of innovations. The prosthetics, for example, the Jaipur foot, uh, it's a hugely innovative uh, idea. Uh, Tata Nano, it's frugal innovation. Okay, so the uniqueness of Indian innovation has been, as uh, Dr. Mashelkar puts it, uh, MLM. So it's like uh, you uh, get more with less for more. Even in the recent times, for example, uh, when for a newborn, uh, finding out those with low birth weight, not many, uh, almost one third of the babies were not getting weighed because of certain taboos. So there are um, uh, institutions which are looking at this and they have come up with uh, a way of estimating the birth weight of the neonates from videos of the, uh, of the child. So uh, these are innovations which are required for India and innovations which have to be socially aware of the realities of India. So yes, uh, India has uh, relied on the science and uh, research innovations, but I would say it has to become much more innovative uh, if it has to become uh, the, a leading country, a developed country. So that is, of course, uh, still now less than what is required, but I think situation is improving, ecosystem is improving. Let us talk about some of the, you know, game-changing innovations of the past 75 years. India you know, even though probably on the technological front, we may not have actually the key contributions, but on the way you combine them and use it, I think that way application domain, we really did a very good job, you know, starting from all this, you know, dot com, you know, when it started with this, uh, you know, year 2K problem beyond that. So today you see that probably we are the most competent nation in the world in terms of digital, you know, usage of anything, be it Aadhaar, you know, it's, it's one of the remarkable thing. And today you see that most of our things are like, let's say passport. I tell you, even if you go to the countries like in US and others, they were nowhere close to the kind of service that India provides, the kind of data, the other technology, all this, this is remarkable, right? 
So I would say this is very strong and there is a lot of possibilities. And I'm sure that, you know, TCS can probably say a lot more because they are part of this, you know, revolution. But other thing we should not forget is that the space technology is something that India has done remarkably well. Okay. This is one where there has been not a single dot of support from anywhere else. This is completely indigenous. It has to be done from ab initio with the least amount of budget and they have really shown the way. Okay. That is, I would say it's a remarkable. Uh, Anand, uh, I want you to talk a little bit about the importance of industries uh, in, you know, investing in uh, research and innovation like TCS does. So from the uh, uh, TCS perspective, Priyanka, that is partly culture, but also part of the strategy of the company itself. And it has yielded us good results over the years. However, for any other industry type uh, to invest at the same level and consistency over the years, uh, it requires one additional factor, which I think is global competitiveness. The Indian IT industry has been lucky because we are global leaders in our industry. Finally, that competitive driver to say that unless you innovate, you will die. Uh, then uh, things magic will happen. Otherwise, uh, it will not. Let me take the IIT system, the, you know. Uh, so after the independence, actually the bottom of the pyramid was not there. So we had to create top quality manpower you need it. Even though I think the finance, there was a lot of financial crisis in the government in terms of getting the best quality undergraduates. And these are the things that, you know, not like what you do in laboratories and others, you know, you put a lot of emphasis on skill, you know, like something analytical skill building, which actually put our students in a much, much way ahead compared to many of the people from wherever they graduate from now. So that's what I call it IIT 1.0, right? That, that's about 20, 25 years at the beginning, okay? Then in the next round, okay, uh, I think it starts with like a Naidamma committee report, which is around 1982 or so. I think the emphasis over there is that we have created a lot of bottom of the pyramid development. Now we go up and see that when I, we go for the postgraduate, you know, level, and then the masters and PhD, all these things started and the research got initiated in a big way. Okay. Thanks to uh, Mr. Naidama. And then this is what I call IIT 2.0, which is for another 20, 25 years. And then I think this is where I think last five or 10 years, we are moving into what you call IIT 3.0, where we said, okay, we have a lot of research because trust me, most of these older IITs, they have 30% of their student base is actually PhD. That's much, much larger than most of the even US big universities, right? So there's a lot of research is happening in all these places. Similarly, IIC, you look at I, ISI Kolkata, you know, the, all these things are happening. There are many good places. Then comes the third 3.0, which is actually connecting to the industry and creating entrepreneurial and other activities. Let, let us do these experiments. Okay, and see that where it takes us from. Okay, and we'll, you know, as long as, you know, as some of them are successful, which is true in even in entrepreneurship, many of them, they fail, right? But some of them, they're so successful and that takes you through. Okay, so that is what I think we should be looking at. Okay, yeah. Anand, uh, can you weigh in here and tell us, you know, uh, TCS RNI has been doing a lot of work across sectors and many of these works actually have an impact on the people of India. So can you walk us through that and in the process also show us a glimpse of the you know opportunities that that may uh, be available to people so the uh, examples that come to mind priyanka if i uh, look back things like for example the uh, contribution of the industry as a whole uh, to the national gdp uh, it's now just around 10% of India's GDP is attributable directly or indirectly to the uh, IT industry. That I think is a fairly large effort, uh, which is not small in terms of impact on the life of every Indian. Secondly, if you look at specifics 
of what TCS has done to the financial sector, if I just take one industry example, uh, the contribution of TCS research and innovation, our, our product and engineering teams to the financial backbone of the country, be it capital markets, be it the banking sector and the payment sector and so on, I think is, is enormous and visible. If I look at the ION platform, which the, uh, uh, the, the uh, assessment exa examination and assessment part of the ION platform, that touches millions of people uh, young people in the country, you know, literally every month, every year, um, and so on. I mean, on the social sector, there are so many things which have been done. The computer-based uh, functional learning and literacy program, which started in TCS Research, uh, the you know the uh, the diagnostic kits for tuberculosis done in the early 1980s, uh, the uh, the water program, which resulted in the Tata Swatch uh, device. Many of these had roots in TCS Research. More recently, during the pandemic, the city of Pune was twinned uh, by TCS research and a range of ecosystem partners in that city so that the strategies of the city administration in unlocking the city or uh, making life easier for the citizens under the glare of the pandemic was, was an exemplary piece of work. In the academic world, I acknowledge uh, uh, IIT Bombay, ISI Calcutta, CSIR, they're all partners of TCS in our co-innovation network in the country. We work together on important problems. We help build talent for not just TCS, but for the industry and the world at large, especially PhD talent. Uh, TCS uh, Foundation has supported 350 computer science PhD students over the last 10 years across a range of institutions who are doing extraordinary work, not just in academia, but in industry as well. So across the board, I think TCS R&I can be proud of the impact that we have created, but I'm even more excited by what lies ahead because we are partnering with all these institutions uh, through the research parks, through the startups that they have, and of course, research collaborations to invent the next generation of world beating solutions. Dr. Mande, I want to come to you. How important is it to retain talent in R&I and how does one do it? How do industries and, uh, you know, uh, academic institutes do it? We have to have a system in which everyone in this entire spectrum has a chance and opportunity to express themselves. And as long as we create a system in which everyone can express themselves and continue to excel what they have chosen, I think we will uh, have a much, much better society for the future and for that the research and innovation plays a very important role as i said the entire spectrum and if we sensitize people that what opportunities exist in the entire spectrum that i said from doing fundamental work up to the society this sensitization alone would be eventually able to uh, uh, retain the talent in the research and ecosystem system innovation ecosystem in the country thank you Anand, I want you to weigh in here because you've been talking about, you know, the career opportunities in research. So walk us through some of these opportunities. Well, Priyanka, you know, it's important for that external ecosystem to be supportive, just like Dr. Mante just said, and I'm sure Sangamitra and, and Subhashish will have similar examples from the academic context. But for any organization, and TCS is no different, it is important to have that culture of innovation from research to uh, real life problems, inventing the technologies to solve those and eventually launch them as new products, new services, uh, perhaps uh, of, of very large impact. That life cycle requires a lot of different capabilities. There is a specific career path that we have created for people in research. Uh, innovation has a similar career path. Lastly, the connect with the external world is so important. So the evangelists in TCS who are the bridge between the problems, ideas and solutions, uh, they have an extraordinary career path as well. So all of these have to be in the mix. Individuals will pick up what is appropriate for them at that point in time in their careers. And lastly, the internal and external connect with startups through the coin ecosystem with academia, through our research partnerships, with the uh, social initiatives that I mentioned, which are so fulfilling, 
for many people to see that impact, not in terms of just revenue or cost, but in terms of social impact. Uh, the digital impact square in Nasik is a great example. You know, there we have students coming in with groundbreaking ideas that they get to test, develop, probe and grow into startups uh, in that uh, ecosystem around Nasik. All of these are ingredients to help people find what uh, they are good at, learn, grow with the organization and build careers for themselves and be very satisfied. So I think it's a mix. I often tell uh, my, my colleagues and younger colleagues uh, specifically that TCS Research and Innovation is like a very diverse buffet in a nice hotel. Uh, Dr. Sangamitra, I want to come to you and I mean, let's talk about the future India. I want to come to you and ask you about, uh, you know, in the future, in the next 25 years, when India is at 100, what are the sectors that will see the most impact from research and innovation? Uh, I'll just, uh, I just thought about a few of these sectors, um, not an exhaustive list naturally, but healthcare is somewhere where India has to focus. Um, uh, affordable healthcare and affordable but high quality healthcare. That is one thing. Green energy, of course, that is uh, absolutely important. There is a focus on also, um, for example, semiconductor industries. That is where uh, research innovation will have to come in because there, that is, um, that is one area where I, India has to become self-reliant in the years to come. Uh, very important is waste management. Uh, from waste to wealth, there is a national mission there and a lot of innovative ideas need to come in there because of the huge amount of waste which gets generated, digital, um, electronic, non-electronic, whatever. So uh, waste management is a very, very critical problem, is going to remain very critical. And of course, education. All of a sudden, you cannot ask that when that person comes into higher education, that overnight, okay, become innovators, start innovating. It doesn't happen like that. It's it's a mindset. It's a, it's a years of you know way of thinking to be, be uh, to become innovators, true innovators, to innovate, and that has to that training, that education system has to be geared to create uh, innovators, to create curious people. So, Anant, a follow up question to you: uh, is What are the key technologies that one must look forward to when we talk about India at hundred? They will be, I think, a very widespread use of computing in every industry. So that is one axis that every engineer, every technologist, every innovator will have to grapple with. Even healthcare and, and life sciences and medicine and so on are going to adopt these at much greater scale going forward. But if I look at the grand challenges that technology is going to be asked to solve in the coming decades, I'll just pick one or two. I think Sangamitra mentioned, uh, you know, the, the, the climate change uh, as one, but I would broaden it to say sustainability as a broad set of challenges. And lastly, from an India perspective, I think education would be my pick. Uh, we have an opportunity to be not just well-educated, but be the educators to the world uh, going forward. So that by itself, I think will be a massive opportunity for people to innovate the learning process itself. That's a very beautiful thought. And on that thought, we've come to the end of the session. I'd like to thank all of you, uh, Anand, Dr. Monday, Dr. Sangamitra and Professor Chaudhary for joining us today and talking to us about the, uh, the you know, contributions of RNI and the potential it holds in building India 2.0. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.